Good morning, sociology. It's our Wednesday Zoom session. And uh, today I'm just going to talk about uh, what's going on this week and uh, do a test review uh, for our chapter four or five test, which is uh, Thursday. The test has already been posted. So if you want to take it sooner than that, you want to take it today, you want to take it. Um, maybe some people already took it because the H group was here on Monday and Tuesday and I told them it was posted. But either way, just remind everybody to take it. But just to go over a, a few things going on here, let me hit share and uh, touch base here, especially for the C group that hasn't come in. And they're only coming in one day this week. So we're going to go to classwork and go down to what's going on this week. There's only two things this week. There's a generation like documentary and assignment, which we're going to do in class on Thursday for the C group. So if you're here on Thursday, you have no other outside of class work to do. We'll do that. We'll talk about it. it's pretty interesting. I think you'll like it. The chapter four or five test uh, we are not doing in class. So uh, you have to do that on your own. Now it's, it's scheduled for Thursday, but it's already posted. So you can open and do it anytime you want. Now, even though you can use your notes in that, and you might think, why do I need a review from Mr. Rio? Uh, I just want to explain a few things <clears throat> to help you understand the notes in that better. Because you just haven't really looked at them since you made your slides. And, um, and then you, um, um, then suddenly you, uh, um, you know, go to take the test and you, maybe you don't understand that much what's going on. So that's what I'm going to help you out with. So we have to back up here two weeks and go to our original notes. I'm just going to open up the PDF of the notes and talk about this. Now there's two parts of this. There's chapter four, which is socializing the individual and there's chapter five, the adolescent society. Today, I'm gonna to focus on chapter five because I've talked about chapter four quite a lot in class and in the other Zoom session, I believe, but definitely I've done it in class in both H and C blocks. So uh, we talked about birth order and parental characteristics and nature versus nurture and personality development and all those things. We've covered that quite extensively already if you've been there and paid attention. So I'm gonna jump ahead to um, Let's see, where does chapter five begin? Chapter five begins at slide 29, the adolescent in society. Adolescence is a very challenging time in life. It's that age range where you're maybe you're, you know, older than you think of what is a kid, but you're still not quite an adult. And it involves a lot of changes in your life, changes going on and growing up, changes in your relationship with friends and family, changes in your brain and physical development and growth, changes in hormones. Uh, there's all kinds of things going on in this age range. Uh, in the U.S., teens are disproportionately affected by violence, both as victims and as perpetrators. Uh, a lot of it's connected to drug use. Uh, that um, teens on drugs or involved in drugs are twice as likely to be involved in violent acts. Um, a lot of teens turn to drugs to deal with other problems they have, like depression or anxiety, and then that's a very poor way to deal with it. it usually makes things a lot worse. Uh, also, while under the influence of drugs or alcohol, they're far more likely to commit all kinds of crimes, um, violence, attacks, sexual assaults, things like that. So the teen years are ones where there's a lot more crime and violence. Um, matter of fact, criminal activity, once you get past about age 40, cuts down very, very low. It's highest in the teens and 20s. So that's a big problem in our country. It's also a time when people are experimenting. There's a lot of peer pressure. Um, now, peer pressure and experimenting can also be for good things. It could be for people choosing healthy lifestyles. Um, pursuing a new career field. Uh, there's all kinds of positive things that happen too. But, um, but a lot of the negative social problems are often the ones that get the most attention. Uh, understanding adolescence refers to, this is for 31, a uh, distinct stage of life that occurs between the onset of puberty and adulthood. Uh, teenagers, in the sense that we usually think about, didn't really take off till after World War II. 
before that, a lot of people, unless a few people would go on, finish high school, go to college or whatever, but a lot would just, you know, kind of, you know, go to eighth grade, ninth grade and just go work. And after uh, World War II, we need a lot more skilled people, you know, industries and everything. So we started really pushing high schools to stay in high school and graduate. And then by the 1960s, started pushing more and more college. <clears throat> and uh, now we're today, we're uh, most any decent job requires not just high school, but some kind of post secondary training, whether it be college or trade school or apprenticeship or whatever it may be. Um, the big um, characteristics of adolescence are biological growth and development, having an undefined status, and that's in your whole life. You're at home, it's like part of you wants to be grown up and be treated like an adult, but your parents still got rules and you're trying to get more independence and you're trying to figure out who you are. You got more decisions to make, more responsibilities, more pressures, and trying to figure yourself out in the middle of it all. <clears throat> so it's a, it's a very challenging time in your life and you're in it right now. Um, adolescence period between normal puberty, onset of puberty and adulthood, puberty, the physical maturing that makes an individual capable of sexual reproduction. So you're going through a lot of physical changes between say age 12 and 19. <clears throat> um, what factors are important to development of adolescence? Education, uh, keeping youth out of the labor force, and the development of the juvenile justice system. We do treat juveniles differently when it comes to crime. Um, and that is because uh, they're considered to not be fully developed and um, often make poor choices. And there's a lot of debate over whether someone 15, 16 years old should be treated the same as an adult, uh, which sometimes they are. There are laws that if you commit a certain type of crime like murder, uh, you could be charged as an adult, which means you're going to get the same penalty whether you're 18 or, or uh, 16 or even 15. So there's debates about that as to what extent they should be treated like an adult as far as sentencing and crime and stuff. Uh, this goes through the characteristics of adolescence, starting with 35. You got biological growth and development, undefined status, increased decision making, increased pressure, and search for self. So it goes into great detail there in all those areas there. So I'm not going to go into that right now. You can read that. Um, what's the most challenging characteristics of adolescence? That's for you to, to uh, put down your own opinion. Coming of age, number 42. Most cultures mark an adolescence entry into adulthood with a rite of passage. <clears throat> um, in the U.S., some typical ones is like getting a driver's license under number 43 or graduating high school. Uh, in some other cultures, you got Mexico has what's called a quinceanera, which uh, I think girls do at 15 years old, and it's their symbolic entry into adulthood. The Navajo Indians have something called Canalda, a four-day ceremony marking entry to adulthood. The Maasai tribesmen, who are of Eastern Africa, uh, boys leave to live in Minyata camps to learn male skills, and that would be a lot of it would be probably about hunting and gathering and fishing and things that they <clears throat> do to survive. Judaism has bar mitzvahs and bat mitzvahs. Uh, bar mitzvah is, a, is for a boy when they turn 13 and a bat mitzvah is for a girl. And it's to be a uh, symbolic of going into adulthood. So some of you might be thinking 13 years old and that way young to be celebrating going to adulthood. You have to remember this tradition started, I don't know, what, 2,000 years ago, whatever, 1,000 years ago, when turning 13 was, in many cultures, you know, around the time you started thinking about, you know, you could be, you know, get married soon or something, you know, people were married at 14, 15, and 16. Um, so today we don't have much of that going on, but that was quite common, even as recently as 100 or 150 years ago. So um, that's one of the changes that has occurred. Challenges of adolescence, um, um, teenagers who engage in early sexual activity often face health challenges, a lot of problems there um, that probably your health class will go into. That could include pregnancy and sexually transmitted diseases, some of which you can never get rid of. Um, adolescents in American society experience a number of social challenges relating to not just sexual behavior, but drugs and suicide. 
So uh, a lot of these problems, a lot of them are intertwined. There's a lot of abuse. There's a lot of um, drug issues, alcohol issues. And <clears throat> since these are not the best ways to treat depression and anxiety and other issues that are the real problems that teens are facing, uh, some turn to suicide. And uh, there's a lot of debates about what to do about that. Um, alcohol consumption, cigarette smoking, which I think has gone down quite a lot. Drug use, drug related violence, persistent widespread problems among teenagers. Suicide is a major challenge facing American teenagers and the suicide rates for teens now exceed the suicide rates for the general population. So there's probably a lot of reasons for that. One of it is the fact that since teens are developing, they can be very impulsive. They could do something, you know, they're, they're, they're feeling bad at that moment and they make a rash decision to do something that's, I've heard really call the permanent solution to a temporary problem. And, um, and that's a big challenge. And so trying to get teens the help that they do truly need to deal with their depression, their anxieties and their stresses is uh, really important. So we need definitely need more uh, um, options for that. Okay, that's pretty much it. So make sure you take the uh, chapter four or five test. Make sure you get caught up on everything. I've posted several times. If there's anything from weeks one through nine you want to get caught up on, do it in the next week or so. Uh, spring break, um, I imagine the majority of you are probably not going to be going away. And it's be a great time to get caught up. And if you're serious about getting caught up, I expect you to be caught up either by the end of spring break or if that's too soon for whatever reason, or if you are going out of town, um, get in touch with me about a plan to catch up if you want to catch up. Now, if you don't want to catch up, um, I can't force you. You're only hurting yourself. Um, also, the what I what's not going to happen is you're not going to come around mid-May. Oh, Mr. Rio, can I do like your assignments from January, February, and March? You'll be like, no, you turned down many opportunities to do that. Um, I'm not going to be graying stuff from before spring break in May. You know, that's what we do now. If you can get it done by end of spring break, great. If you can't, but you touch base with me before the end of spring break, um, and you say, Mr. Rio, I'm not going to get it all done by the end of spring break, but I really want to do this. And we have a plan and you're making progress on it each week. Uh, we can do that. You know, then I give you a little extension. If you're working with me, you're not working with me. You're ignoring all the options. You're ignoring all the opportunities. Uh, you're not making any effort. You blew off chance after chance after chance. They're not going to be there in May. In May, I'm going to have no sympathy. And every year I get some people come to me who are flunking. They have almost no chance to pass. And suddenly they want to do it all the last week before the end of the school year. It's like, forget it. You know, at that point, that should be a lesson learned, you know. Um, doesn't, not many people do that. But, uh, but uh, unfortunately, some people do. They make really bad decisions for months. They turn down many opportunities and then they don't pass the class and, and I, you won't pass. I mean, I'm not going to pass people who don't deserve to pass and I'm not going to give chances that never end. Matter of fact, that's probably a bad thing for those people because like we saw in the procrastination Ted talk, if there's not a deadline or whatever, they'll just never do it. They'll just be like, nope, nope, just keep postponing, postponing, postponing. So that's their problem, not mine. Okay. And I'm going to be real firm on that. So um, good luck with all this and uh, let me know if there's any questions or problems and take your test by Thursday midnight. Um, I'm going to undo this here. Uh, stop sharing. I'm back here. I'm in the studio and this will be posted for those who missed it live. So uh, take care and uh, have a great spring break.